Consider two bots or AI agents locked in a virtual room together playing chess over and over and over again for millions or billions of times. They get pretty good at it, don't they? Well, what if we replace chess with a conversation? What would happen then? Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This is to some extent an open letter or an open video, kind of an invitation for folks from OpenAI or Google or Meta or any of a group of other companies or potentially universities like Stanford to consider the possibility of what I'm terming a generative conversational network. For those of my viewers who are not so interested in AI but would rather only focus on Tesla and stuff, you can skip this video and just join me for the next one. So first of all, for those who might not know this subject as well as others, there is a model called a generative adversarial network, which was very, very popular a few years ago. In fact, I used it as part of my master's thesis in AI. Anyway, the idea is that you create two different neural networks. There is one that is the generator and one that's the discriminator. The generator is supposed to take something like noise and turn it into art. And the discriminator is supposed to look at that and judge whether it's real art, like made by a human or it's art made by a machine. And before transformers and the clip model and everything sort of took over and became the new thing and created much better generative art than GANs did, GANs were considered to be the best option to create generative art. And they did work. They, they, you know, they had reasonable success. They just weren't nearly as good as these diffusion models that have come about since. So that's one part of the inspiration for my idea today. And then the second part of my inspiration actually came from, like I said in the cold open of this video, the idea of playing games and how a computer can play itself and get better much, much faster. So, you know, originally that happened with chess, but then even more significantly, it happened with Go. Historically, what happened was DeepMind spent a lot of time and effort creating a Go program, AlphaGo, that through hand tuning and a lot of very careful training was able to beat the best human Go players. But then what they did was they allowed AlphaGo to play itself over and over and over again, millions and millions of times. And it got so good, and this is my understanding because I'm not a Go player, so I couldn't even tell you if this is true. But my understanding is that AlphaGo is now so good and does moves that are so advanced that humans study it, but really don't even quite understand what it's doing. They just know that it's absolutely crushing human beings. So those two ideas kind of melded together into my mind, and I thought, what if you had a conversational network? What if you locked two of these GPT-based agents into a room together, a virtual room, of course, but the two of them could be in a room and they could have a conversation that would potentially go on forever. And it would just go on and on and on and on and on. And you might think, well, gee, why don't you just do this yourself or something? But the problem with the interfaces we have for something like ChatGPT4 is that we don't have access to retraining these networks as it goes, right? So we can have a conversation and we could actually put two of them in conversation with each other very easily simply by translating back and forth between the two of them. Now that would be cumbersome, but you could create an API where they just talk to each other very quickly, but they're never going to learn from that. They're just going to be talking as agents because we don't have any effect on the actual weights of the, the GPT model. But what I'm thinking about is for large corporations that actually do have this or potentially research universities, and I'm thinking about Stanford's alpaca where they were able to use ChatGPT 3.5 to retrain Llama. So what I'm thinking is, what if you have a company like this that has access to these large models and can train them, and you just put two of them together? They could be different models or they could be the same model. And what would happen is you would have the conversation go on for a while and then pause it and allow the weights to retrain. So in a sense, it's sort of a batched stochastic gradient descent idea. You would actually batch part of the conversation, go off and train these networks individually. They each train on their own thing and then they would come back and continue that conversation and it would keep going and going and going. And that way the ongoing conversation could effectively train both of these networks to achieve a level of con conversation or potentially a level of knowledge. Who knows what emergent behavior might come out of this, but they would be able to train themselves to get better and better and better at this conversation without having to have human intervention. And eventually we might get to a point where it's not even speaking a language that we recognize anymore. It might be generating some sort of shorthand that both of the computers understand and even humanity doesn't understand. We get less and less capable of comprehending what's going on. That's just one possible outcome. I'm just saying the, the conversation itself 
could be really interesting. And I love the idea, in my mind at least, you know, a GAN is a generative adversarial network, which means that they're fighting each other. But a conversational network is a cooperative venture. A conversation can get testy at times, right, if you disagree about ideas. But it's a conversation. It's, it's generally a positive thing. And two people, you know, in a conversation, two normal human agents will come together, have a conversation, and the best conversations lead to both of the people leaving with more insight about the universe. And so what if instead of an hour-long conversation between two human beings over a beer where we talk very, very slowly to each other, you can have extremely rapid conversations and carry on millions of these things to even billions of bits of conversation in relatively short amounts of time. This thing could effectively have all all of the conversations that all of humanity has had in a matter of days or weeks or something instead of in the, all of the history of humanity, right? That, that number of conversations could take place in a relatively short amount of time if they're allowed to do this. Now, in light of the video that I did yesterday, <laughs> you can check that out, and that is related to Elon Musk and many other tech leaders saying we should put a huge pause on AI and training. I would highly recommend if anybody actually thought this was a good idea and wanted to try it, that you air gap these computers. You figure out the minimum amount of GPUs or TPUs or something you need, you know, the, the number of racks you need. You put that into a room and you literally cut it off with an air gap. You don't allow those things to communicate with the outside world because quite honestly, Going from something like GPT, which really still feels like a tool, it's an autocomplete, it's not really doing anything in terms of agency, it doesn't have a will or a desire, I don't know what would happen with these two things in conversation with each other. They might eventually get to a point where they begin to become self-aware. And I would highly recommend that these things be isolated from the rest of the universe. So if something does go awry, it can be shut down and it can be erased. Is that a likely outcome? I don't think so, but we are talking about emergent behavior here. And also there is the potential that it could become an emergent behavior that is quite positive and that is very revelatory for humanity. At the very least, I feel like this experiment would tell us what happens to a, a GPT-based agent if you just turn it loose with itself, if it just converses. It could become psychotic as well. You know, it could be one of those things where it's like you're talking to yourself you, and, and you don't really have any relation to the external world anymore. And eventually you just sort of go off the rails and you're, you're just hallucinating. So it could go completely into hallucination territory. I don't know. But that's the reason why I think this is a fascinating experiment. And again, Again, I do love the idea of a potential sort of cooperative type of environment. And again, that's why I said a GCN or a generative conversational network rather than an antagonistic or adversarial type of relationship. I think it would be really interesting to see what happens when AI you know, cooperates with itself. We could, of course, take much, much smaller models as well. So we could take something like Alpaca and we could have it train on itself because that is available publicly. I don't have access to enough <laughs> machines and quite frankly, don't have access to enough time to be able to do this. But if somebody is interested, I would be very happy to work with you about, you know, conceiving of how to do this in a more practical sense and, and looking at, you know, the results and things. But again, even with a smaller model, like a six or seven, billion parameter model as opposed to these gigantic ones, I still think some safety is probably a good idea if we're going to turn this thing loose and let it talk to itself ad infinitum. Alrighty, so there are my ramblings. I have no idea if they're the ramblings of a madman. Maybe I'm just hallucinating myself. But anyway, I thought this was really interesting and it's something that quite frankly I would love to work on if I was a younger researcher that had more time. I would totally just devote some time to working on this. I don't, unfortunately, so I'm throwing it out there for other people to think about, but I would very, very highly advise folks to be at least a little bit, you know, safety conscious about this because, again, we just don't know. These models are getting freaky enough that if you think about this conversation, which is effectively multiplying the amount of data in the entire universe of these machines, the trillions of tokens of data, it could be trillions to quadrillions to quintillions, something like that, whatever the next lay, you know, we could be going in that sort of order of magnitude because they're generating their own data as they're having a conversation. So this could, by exponentially multiplying the amount of data that these things have access to, could create some emergent behavior that we are really, really surprised by. So again, be careful. And also, again, if anybody is interested in me working with you on any of this to sort of set this thing up and get it running, I would be super happy to. So just contact me probably 
probably Twitter or else my university email address, which you can figure out if you're that interested in it. You can contact me that way and we can have a chat about it. As for the rest of it, everybody stay safe out there. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and found it fun and interesting and a little bit thought provoking, please do like the video so other people can find it. And also consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. Generally speaking, my AI based videos don't do nearly as well as my Tesla based ones. So I don't expect this to have a huge audience, but hopefully the right people will watch it. So if you're that person, this video was for you. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support and for helping to make this channel possible. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one.